Good afternoon to everyone. Um, I cannot talk about this new concept without briefly talking about add-on and uh, the Shariat macular lens. It was already explained that the add-on technology is different to a piggyback and prevents all the complications we know from piggyback IOL implantation. Um, my first experience started with a toric um, add-on lens in a post-perforating KPL um, patient um, with a high astigmatism, um, was virtually blind um, with an astigmatism of minus 10 diopters and uh, reached a vision of 0 0.6 uncorrected after a toric add-on. Then we are using as a temporary refractive implant the add-on lenses in patients after vitrectomy with silicon oil tamponade and we remove the add-on when we remove the silicon oil. Um, the Chariot macular lens is based on this add-on platform. It combines the proven add-on technology with sufficient magnification without affecting distance vision or visual field. It has a simple bifocal design with a special central optic of one and a half um, millimeters and about 10 diopters of addition. The peripheral zoom in the standard version is zero, but it can be ordered in any diopter. It's a hydrophilic material with round polished edges and a patented haptic design. Here I would like to show, uh, share with you a um, video of the implantation. I personally prefer to have a slightly larger um, incision size and to have the nozzle of the cartridge inside the anterior chamber. I use always a second instrument to guide the haptics and if everything goes perfect, even all the haptics are inside the ciliary sulcus. If not, you can use the second instrument then to place them. And you see how nicely immediately this lens centers. Here's the, what I call, raindrop of the um, macular lens. Once you have a new IOL, the first is the patient number one. It's a very exciting moment, and that was a patient 85 years old, single-eyed, after 13 intravitreal injections. And we could improve in this patient the near vision from Radna 12 to Radna 4. That means he could read newspaper again after implantation of the macular lens. We published results in 2015 in Journal of Cataract Refractive Surgery, and I'm quite proud that the editors choose the IOL for the cover page. After we had experience with AMD, we extended the indications and we extended, for example, to myopic patients. And here's one of the examples. It was a high myopic patient after cataract surgery with a vitreo macular traction syndrome. And the um, patient improved after vitrectomy. You see this is the post-op half a year with a nice anatomical result. Distance vision improved, but she was unhappy with the near vision. After implanting the SML, she could read newspapers and was quite happy. Another patient, um, high myopic um, status post several intravitreal injections because of um, myopic macular degeneration was referred to me. The right eye was high myopic with minus 16, an astigmatism of three and a half diopters and a mild nuclear cataract. And she already forgot about this eye because she had the injections in this eye several years ago and now she suffered from the second eye um, with a moderate myopia, minus six, and myopic um, degeneration. Um, but we decided after discussion to do a cataract surgery with simultaneous toric IOL implantation and the SML implantation in her right eye, and distance vision from best corrected distance vision improved from 0 0.1 to best uncorrected vision 0 0.3, and near vision improved from RADA 9 to RADNA 2, and she was quite happy. Here you see the um, retroillumination image with the toric IOL and the SML in place and very well centered. This experience with the high myopes guided me to a new concept. And what is the problem in high myopes in my experience, um, especially that, um, or what is the advantage for them, sorry, um, is when we um, reduce the high myopia, it will improve their distance vision, but they often suffer from losing their near vision. They are really used to see in the very near that's the one. The second is we have also, also problems with IOL calculation because of the actual length, the effective IOL, effective IOL position, and um, some of them have a status post-refractive surgery. The traditional concepts are, for example, clear lens extraction and targeting moderate myopia in both eyes or myopic monovision. Also, some surgeons do implant multifocal um, IOLs in these patients. Again, there is the problem of refractive outcome, and 
patients do not like the low addition and they really suffer that they lost these magnifying effect, what I call a microscopic effect when they put it in a very near, when they are excessive myopic. Another option is of course bioptics. Here's the problem, it's a second intervention and it's irreversible. So what is the new concept then? Again, it's clear lens extraction. What we target is in the first eye emetropia that results in a magnification and improved distance vision. Then in the second eye, we target mild myopia that is for intermediate vision. And in the first eye, then we implant the SML that improves the near vision and gives an excellent near vision for these patients. They are used to these reduced reading distance and um, if the emetropia was not achieved with the first surgery, you can use a refractive version of the SML. Also, what we have experienced now is that any time after, so if you have done years ago, for example, um, cataract surgery to a high or excessive myope, you can go for a secondary implantation with the SML. We are still, I'm still looking for a quite good term for this to describe it and now I would prefer binocular trifocal monovision for high myopes and this is what this nice lady is explaining here. So one eye is for the distance vision and the very near and the other eye is for the uh, intermediate vision and this is how it looks then in the retro elimination. Why is the SNML an excellent option for the high myopes? It gives them sufficient magnification, is an easy and safe surgery. It's independent from the lens status, so it can be implanted any time after a previous cataract surgery. It does not affect the visual field, the distance vision or retina diagnostic. It gives a predictable post-operative refraction. It's completely reversible. That's very important, I, th I think. In our experience, um, it gives also less dysphotopsia compared to multifocal lenses, and it's quite affordable. With more than 1,000 implantations of SML worldwide, um, I would like to conclude that it has the potential to help patients with any macular disease, like AMD, myopic MD, diabetic maculopathy, or other maculopathies, and as a new refractive concept for high myopes. And I also want to announce that this afternoon we will have a course on this um, SML implantation and other intraocular magnifying lenses for patients with macular degenerations. Thank you very much for your attention.